Lee, can you describe the learning experience that you want to talk about for this? Uh, the learning experience that I provided for the students was to use Leebots and the students were to choreograph the dance routine. So how did this uh, unit link to your curriculum? The curriculum aspects involved in this unit included uh, the main focus on technology which encompassed the design make praise process but it also um, integrated the arts strand or the arts um, key learning area uh, specifically the dance strand. Can you describe this, the teaching sequence? Did it, did it move from teaching and lead eventually to an accessible item? It certainly did. Uh, there were three tasks involved. The first two tasks um, we utilised the uh, Bebot software where the students could build their confidence uh, and their confidence in using the Bebots and then we started to work with the devices so that the kids could then um, make that link between the software and the devices um, and worked in small groups so that they could then have a deep understanding before they actually perform their, their final performance. Action. So why did you ask the students to choreograph a dance routine for B-Bots rather than a dance routine for people? Action. Uh, quite simply, um, when you're doing a dance uh, unit, um, kids are able to be creative, but this allowed the students to um, acquire some different skills by using ICTs and in using robotics, it was something new that they hadn't done before. Action. And so I guess also if your main focus was on the KLA of technology, then Bebots probably fit um, quite nicely into the design make praise process which you had said previously was your focus. And action. Certainly. Um, the Bebots was a means to the end of the task or to the assessment item um, because it was authentic. Um, but the main focus was for the students to have an understanding of the DMA process. The main um, accessible items was the DMA process, so the kids do really have a deep understanding of the design, in other words the planning, then the doing and then the reflection, which is very important. Action. You've already talked about the reflective processes that you use. Can you expand a little bit on some of the creative processes and opportunities that you gave the students? Action. Yep, from the beginning, um, I showed some snippets of some YouTube videos um, so the kids could actually see the different dance routines. The three dance choices that the kids had was to either choreograph a ballet a line dance or a hip hop. Uh, we also listened to some different music uh, that, that related to those dance styles. Uh, and then that also allowed the students to really, um, before they started using the software and the devices, to have a real strong mindset of which style they wanted to use first. So that they can then really expand on their creativeness. Um, but how we did it was individual small group and, and uh, whole class discussions as well as hands-on activities. Action. How did this activity, the B-Bots and the learning environment that you created, allow the students to experience the design maker praise process and understand it better? Action. Basically, uh, it allowed the students as it was a, a rich, authentic task, to, to have a discussion but which, with, with myself and with their peers to find out what was um, the ideal way to plan um, and to perform. But the most important aspect that I really uh, uh, taught the, the students was one step at a time. When you're planning, do one step and then test it and to see how it actually works. Otherwise, um, students who uh, lack a little confidence 
um, it becomes a jumbled mess for them and, and, and it really affects their overall result. So I really do emphasise one step at a time. That's great, Lee. Talking today, I think we've quite clearly seen that you've worked um, in the areas of PP2, um, PP4, PP5, and I think we could probably extend that a little bit with further conversation to get into PP7 as well. That's terrific, thank you. Yeah, that's good.